Whether your style is colorful and bold or meditative and mystical, India offers the spectrum for design inspiration. More is better with our first design from Kate Richberg. Hi, Kate. Hey, Katie. I'm glad you're here. I am glad to be here. Great. These bracelets are beautiful. Thank you so much. It's a style I call the Bollywood bracelet. Why did you decide to call it that? Well, it's a classic. It's a classic design that we like to do, and um, you know the flair and color and I don't know deep, rich tones of India. Um, it really comes out, I think, in the palettes. And you know when you're dancing, you know what Bollywood dances it's are good so to have amazing. A right? Of it is right? right. You want to stack them up so they're perfect for stacking. Totally agree. So tell us a little bit about how we're getting started here. Yeah, so what I did was, and you can see with some of the, the ones that I brought, the color studies are a little more um, monochromatic. So I thought I'd pump it up a little bit and choose a kind of a fun India-inspired palette. So I'm using some Chinese knotting cord. It's a 0.5 millimeter. And then I chose just a variety of seed beads in six and eight aughts that complemented the cord. Okay, so Pretty you easy. want to make sure that you choose seed beads that fit with the cord that you're using, exactly, right? Exactly, exactly. And uh, the 0.5 Chinese knotting cord fits perfectly both with the sixes and eights, though the eights you may sometimes need to use a little um, wire needle to okay. get them through. And it looks like you created your own setup here, which I think is fantastic. Thank you. You know, I love using just this simple design tray right? And just with a velvet pad on the inside. And it's easy to travel with. You know, you could toss it into your bag and, and when you're on the plane to India, make a fist <laughs> or a wristful of, of beautiful of bracelets. Plenty for jewelry exactly. making. Exactly. So I've just, um, I've started by cutting uh, some Chinese knotting cord, two pieces. One is about a yard and then the other is about three yards. Okay. okay. And in the one yard piece, I have knotted, I've folded it in half and I've made a little overhand knot here at the center. And then over the two strands, I've slid a six aught bead. And then this, um, I, I measured from uh, that knot to this about two inches and then tied another knot there. Okay. And you can see I've just used a clip here to um, fasten it right to the board and it gives me some tension for my macrame. I think this is great. You know, it's super easy. You know, you could use a macrame board, but it's really easy to, you know, you could use a shoebox lid here if you wanted, right? Right. So I um, folded this three yard piece in half and I added kind of an arbitrary number of um, seed beads. They're about 16 or so. And in the design, as you're doing, it's a plain, simple macrame square knot. Um, you can bring the beads up as often or as little as you'd like, just depending on how bead heavy you want this project to be. Okay. So to begin, um, I've tied little stopper knots on the ends, so my beads are kind of laying out here on the end of my thread. And to start with the macrame square knot, it's so, so easy. I am going to start by making, I, I call it my Q and P method. All right, so here, if I bring my cord, it's underneath this main strand, just below that knot. You can see, as we look at it, it looks like the letter Q, okay? Yeah. I come, I bring the second one over the tail and up through the center of the Q. And I have the beads, since they're already on the strand, just follow right along. And then I come in and I tighten, and there's my first knot. Now, here comes the P side. I do the same thing. The letter P comes around. You can see that's a P. I come with this uh, strand from the opposite end over that tail and up through the center of the letter P. Okay. Okay? And tighten. And so now I've made a complete square knot uh, macrame knot. So let me do this one more time, but let me show you from my perspective. We're going to start with that Q side again, right? Here's my Q mm -hmm. coming down and across. This opposite strand goes over that tail and out and up through the circle of the Q and tighten. Now, same thing on this side. Here goes the P side. There's my letter P over with the opposite end and up through the center of the P. Now, and the beads just follow right along because they're already been knotted on the piece. Yeah. Now, 
let's say that you have to go away or answer the phone or do something and you come back, you're all, oh my gosh, where was I? Where, which side do I start with? You can see here on the knot how there's a little scallop, right? On this side, there's no little scallop on that side. I always know that if I start on the side that has the scallop, I know that's the side that I make my loop. So I you can go away. You know this is going to work out. I do, <laughs> I do. I know that it's all gonna be okay. So see there, and there's my little scallop. So soon you won't even be counting P's and Q's. You will just be knotting. That's right, and you'll be able to tell right away if you miss knot. If you miss knot, it'll start to look a little, you know, a little askew. It's, it starts to twist, mm -hmm. yeah. Exactly. Right. Which is another great knot in itself. Yeah, it is. Right, just going one way. So now you can decide how you want to add beads. Now you could just slide a bead up on both sides. So I'm going to slide a bead up, and from this end, slide a bead up, and you just knot them in. There's just continue my loop. on your yeah, way. Yeah, just continue. And so you can see they might want to walk around a little bit, but you know what? You're in charge of those beads. So you just get those nice and tight right up there. And then I might tie a couple of, you know, holder knots there and then bring some more beads up as I go. Okay. Cool. And now this one that I've done here that I've I've continued on with, the beads aren't side to side. These are slightly staggered. So instead of bringing beads up both at the same time, yeah. I bring up one, tie a knot, then bring up the other and tie the knot. Good idea. So it's fun. So to measure this, Katie, I want this to be about two inches longer than my finished um, bracelet needs to be. So I want my bracelet to be about seven inches-ish. The cool thing about these bracelets is, is that they are adjustable, right? The, the way we close them up. So I have two inches here. I have done macrame for about five inches. And so I think that's about long enough. So we're gonna take this off and I'm gonna show you how to finish it up. Okay. Let me um, just make sure that's nice and tight and I'm gonna give myself one more quick knot here at the end. Okay. And that'll just close things up nicely. And once that goes through, we're gonna take this off of, we're gonna take it off of the clips, unclip it, and we're just gonna tie a little overhand knot here. So let's free this up and I'm gonna take all of these strands together. You may have some beads remaining on the ends. It just depends on how many you've used on the design. Um, but I'm just gonna come in, overhand knot it, slide everything through. Okay. And tighten it up. Nice. And then once this is tightened, you're gonna uh, choose two strands and we're gonna cut uh, the two extra strands away, and those two strands will be uh, will be your closing strands. So let me show you what I've got. I've got one right over here that's ready to go. And you can see here, there's that nice overhand knot that I've made. Here are my two spare strands. And then I came in and to make the end match the beginning, I've just strung a six aught bead over two strands of the cord and tied a nice knot here. So now we can clean everything up. I can clip this away, being very careful not to nick any of your other threads, right? That would be a bummer. That would be. And do you put glue on there? You know, you can if you want. And I'll be honest, Katie, sometimes I do and sometimes I don't. You could add just a little bead cement right there on the end if you felt the need to do it. Okay. Right? So here, we're almost ready to, uh, to finish up here. We're gonna add a little what I call the fishtail closure, the fishtail knot. And I've cut about um, about a foot or so of uh, cord, and it can be in a matching color or a, a contrasting color, just depends okay. on what you like. Now, this is a fun little trick. I bring both of these strands together, both of all four strands are sitting here, and I have a flexible eye wire needle that I also add into this mix, okay? And I get my clamps and I clamp all of that together here and here, just exposing a little section where I'm gonna tie that knot. And all you need are, um, I don't know, a few little knots to close it off, but you do wanna remember as you are, uh, as you start this, that you are macrameing towards the 
eye of the needle. Okay, why is that important? Because, Katie, we are going to, after we tie these knots, this thre uh, the ends of this cord are gonna be strung through the eye of that needle and pulled underneath the knot. So you don't have to glue or burn the threads away or anything. I know, it's what? like magic. <laughs> I know, it's crazy. Let me just tie a couple more here. Um, you just need enough to hold everything together. Uh, and if you do this in a contrasting color, it also really shows up nicely. Um, but sometimes I like to go monochrome on these. Just depends on what, what you dig. So I'm gonna finish these guys up. This, this looks like a good little round of knots right here, like so. Now, are you ready for this? Yes. Let's unclip. Okay. And you don't wanna tie this super tight. You still wanna have a little bit of room so this needle moves around. Okay. Right. And I'm just going to put the tip through here and the tip through here like that. You need a lot of slack here. If your eye needle eye is too close, it'll be very difficult for you to pull it, right? So you need a little bit of room. Now I'm going to get my chain nose plier. It's going to help me pull this needle underneath. And sometimes it's, it wants to, it's a little tight, but you've got to just kind of work it through. Sometimes you just gotta flip those little knots there. There it comes, and it's through. Now you just wanna pull each of those threads nice and evenly, and Katie, I'm gonna clip away, and voila, an adjustable little knot, ready for Bollywood. Definitely ready for any, any wood. <laughs> That's right. Any, <laughs> These are great. Any I place. Love, I yes. love this color palette that you did here. Yeah. And you can see here on the ends where that finished knot is in a contrasting color. That yeah. does add some flair to it your does. piece. It does. Yeah, well, I will admit that as we began this segment, I totally went through your pile and picked all these to match my <laughs> you outfit did. today. You so. did, and they look great on you. Oh, thank oh, you. You're welcome. Thanks a lot for being here, oh, Kate. thank you so much for having me. I always love the ideas that you bring. Oh, well, thanks. It's fun to do it.